Good morning, my dear students from Delhi, Jharkhand, Assam, Tipura, Manipur, and all the institutes of, of, of Assam. Today, we are going to speak on an important topic that is prolapse intervertebral disc. So, invariably, there is a discussion in long case in examinations, and it is invariably problems we encounter day to day practice in the casualty or even OPD. So, we will try to understand how it happens, one, what is the presentation, what is your clinical examination, how it helps you to come to a diagnosis and also the little bit of the treatment protocol. So as usual, before going to the subject proper, we used to start with a philosophy from Gita. As you all know, Gita is not a uh, your religion book, religious book, it is a book of your philosophy of life. So it says the evam jata kitam karma karma rapi mabukhabi kuru karma ipatasman purpa purbatram kitam. A lord says to Arjuna, let's see the liberations from seekers of the liberations in the ancient time was also there. And you need to follow the footsteps ancient stages for the to perform the action now. So he says. There is this effort of the liberations um, is always there and need to follow the step according to the past ancient times. Okay. So today we are going to talk on the various functions, the constituents of the intervertebral disc and how it get prolapsed and that con leads to a consequence of the backache and radicular pity and so and so on. Before going to this subject proper, the presentations, we necessarily need to understand what is this, how this form, and what is this function. As you all know, basically, in the lumbar cycle, lumbar cycle, lumbar spine, and the cervical spine, or all the vertebrae in between two vertebrae, we have a disc that is intervertebral disc between two vertebrae. The basic functions, if you do consider, is basically to give a cushion or also movement, also height of the total height of the spine. So, if you do understand that the, 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 this is your end plane. Before that, that in the whole spine, particularly in the regions of your cervical spine and the thoracic lumbar, lumbar spine, the importance of the intervertebral is paramount. The basic functions is more important of movement related things. So in this area, while you are doing the various movement of the, of the neck and also equally there is more movement in the lumbar area, but there is relatively less movement in the thoracic area. The area where there is more movement, and there is a price we have to pay. The wear and designations, the lot of problems related to movements are reflected in the intervertebral disc. And that leads to your consequence of degenerations, and that your subsequently it leads to your lot of problems around the motion vertebra. The motion vertebra we say. The motion segment, as you know, the motion segment is the unit of the lumbar spine. It's more important the adjacent part of the uh, pedicle, uh, adjacent part of the uh, end plate, both side, that area, particularly in front of the joints, is the motion segment. And this part is the most most important part which goes all the changes because of this, because of the movement. So, and this thing is also important that we should understand the fact that the, our posture from quadruped to biped is yet not complete. The evolution is still going on. And we are now erect biped, but the, our spine is yet to get fully evolu evolution, undergo the full period of evolution to give actually this actually the actually it make us equipped to be more erect 
and that is why we are paying the price by neck pain and back pain that is more common because of your posture and that's also related to your various moments and it's also important to understand if you are unable to maintain the correct posture and if you go and you strains probably the problems are more okay that is a general things but let us talk little bit of the intervertebral discs first so intervertebral discs as you see here is a <coughs> having two parts as you all know one is annulus fibrosus around and nucleus pulposus here this is the end plate and in between the two end plates we do have the intervertebral discs the intervertebral discs basically constitute of two part one is the covering that is your <coughs> annulus fibrosus which has a criss cross type of our alignment collagen this is important to keep the in a uh, nucleus pulposus which is lying inside and confining it this nucleus pulposus is all know is a gelatinous sort of substance which is important for <coughs> which is important for maintaining the length one is length also helps us your movement and also equi distributions of the weight that is falling that is important that is also helps us distributions of the weight throughout the end plate not concentrated in one area so the chances of degeneration is less so this is basically the function and the anatomical constituents and now in a situation so pedi what it is and how it happens we are going to talk at this point that you all know that this that the intervertebral disc is here we have the posterior longitudinal line here somewhere here then you have the anterior longitudinal line here and if you are coupling these two then you will find intervertebral disc here which is giving the stresses for your root now blue is coming out like this over the pedicle like this so this is the thing that correlation is important to understand that why this pain originating from the disc originating disc is leading to your lot of problems as you all know the disc itself is a vascular very little nerve vessels are going and you know that is arterial supply and also lymphatic supply is minimal is surviving on the diffusions from this nearby your structures and plate and that is how we are maintaining its nutrition also so now what exactly happens in the process of degeneration while is happening that this outer cover is annulus fibrosus somehow unable to make the intervertebral this content to it that means he unable to make it confined as a result of which he is going prolapse and most of the time the prolapse is posterior it is also true that every time the prolapse is posteriorly no it sometimes go anteriorly also some other direction as well but relatively it is uncommon to see to dig prolapsing from outer side out um, uh, anteriorly or laterally but more predominantly it is the posterior side probably stress is more now question arises if it is happening what are the defined stages that it know that once it is going for protrusions out so annulus fibrosus is stick in depth but if it is bulging out which may be evident by our investigative tool but still the annulus fibrosus is intact it is a protrusion only it is only the bulge even the annulus fibrosus is not torn now next stage what happen if the steering is taking place then the, the nucleus pulposus is protruding out but still it is remaining having contact with the internal side inside so that is a protrusion extrusion but it is still constriction and other stages you will find sometimes the disc is coming out completely and it may go even upwards and downwards or it is lying into the canal so it is completely free from the attachments of the original site 
so it is completely the sequestration so protrusions extrusions sequestrations these are the various stages of your disc and it also make you understand that at that point of time what is the role of annulus fibrosus how it is containing it how much is torn out and how much is going out and how much it is going sequester and sometime and that is one one of this now about the position now how from it is coming out which area as you know dix is lying over here here we do have this cord here in this area we have the cord and and you have the posterior longitudinal ligament lying over here so necessarily this part is stronger so if you do consider that the part which is at the lateral to the margins of the longitudinal ligament is relatively weak so relatively weak. that is why the protrusions is most of the time taking place at the area that is posterior lateral so why is it important that the posterior longitudinal is lying over here so this area is somehow relatively less resistance resistance and at this area the dicks usually protrude again dicks protrusions may be again i have said the prolapse may be of different stages depending upon how much it is out and is it completely out or it is still having contact now question arises Uh, that uh, is there any area where it may go yes sometime it may go for central also it is true centrally while it is coming it's in a massive disc prolapse it is true that sometimes central disc prolapse is causing central compressions of the cord and even your consequence of parietal syndromes may take place it is not an uncommon but sometime it is coming out but see the ligament is in this sub ligament of protrusions means ligament is still intact but annulus fibrosus is torn and protrusions is taking place but still the posterior ligament is keeping intact so that is a sub ligamentous protrusions but most of the time the come proper as i said the protrusion is posterior lateral and sometimes go lateral also so depending upon who is if it is go lateral it is canal or extra canal also root extra so 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 post depending upon the position of the posterior posterior lateral lateral or far lateral recess so it may go lateral so that also is important to understand that it has a bearing with the origin of the pain and also the compressive effect on the nerve root adjacent to it now now okay fine nix is ole but what are the consequence what are the consequence yes one need to understand that this what are the position of the roots over here we all know we do have this spinal cord over here and uh, this intervertebral foramen we do root is coming out supposing if it is l4 vertebra upper one and it is l5 what root is coming out from this side so from this side we will be having l4 root are coming this is called exiting root another root which is coming out of the cord but it is going straight and to be out out of the this vertebra this is your traversing root so exiting root and traversing roots are very important to understand and that is why the consequence of this prolapse will also reflect on it as i said i would like to repeat it again to make the things more simple that this it is intervertebral foramen and through which the root is coming out we all know if it is l4 vertebra and it is l5 vertebra if this root is coming out between these two this is l4 root is coming out on the other hand which is root is now separating from the cord but it is not exiting but going down to be out from the down but intervertebral foramen that is a traversing root now necessarily from this point of view one can make understand that the root which is almost far lateral which is exiting out in a common situation of the posterior lateral protrusions or the extrusions of the discs probably this root may escape it may not give the pressure effect 
but necessarily that root is which is adjacent to it which is now exiting root or traversing root is get compressed so in a situations common situations so what will be the outcome what can be simple the l45 but where this is for to bring out in a common situation is l45 root <coughs> this is producing out the root which is exiting is already out l4 exit out Traversing root is going nearby, so that root is going to be complex. But it is also true that it is a common situation. But reversing may also happen. Reverse means if the root is narrow and this is spreading very far lateral, then there is a possibility that the involvement of the exiting root also. Or on the other hand, if the disc prolapse is significant, very high, very massive sort of there is a possibility of involvement of the both exiting root as a traversing root but in a common pictures like this this is the common situations probably is happening and it is reflecting on the neurological deficits the sensory and motor of the root which is being compressed so that is a practical realistic pictures as you all know this is a mechanical thing so if the mechanical thing is happening, the root, the root is causing, the root is being compressed by the protruding root, uh, so the disc, it exerts a pressure effect and also some inflammatory process. That leads to your pain, irritations of the nerve, and if the pain is initially confining to the back, if the pressure effect is more in the root, that now, that root is being, which is being compressed, also going down then we say it is sciatica but root pain the characteristic of root pain is originating from here and being reflected down below along the course of the sciatic nerve and also predominantly the area of zone of the root which is supplying the sensory and motor will be reflected by some sort of deficiency the deficiency essentially since it is a mixed up of nerve it is means root because this root carries so the sensory and the motor fiber necessarily the deficit will also be reflected by deficiency of the sensory and the motor in the, at the distributions and if the pressure effect is more the damage is more if sometimes there may not be any pain of this root may not be everything is gone everything is gone no sense of event that indicates that this root is being damaged. It may happen sometime. So the compression is there. Compression and compression for a long time. Probably the root may go further damaged and may come to a point that is irreversible of the situations and there is a permanent deficit there. So it all depends upon the duration of the compressions and how much it is compressing over there. Now, two more things I would like to add over here. That why the pain is more while he is standing, and why the pain is less while he is sleeping. You try to understand the thing that while the person is sleeping like this, this disc is lying over there like this. So necessarily, the pressure effect on the disc is very minimal. This is least, least interdiscal pressure pressure least minimum now once he is standing like this so the pressure effect is gradually increasing so there is a reflection in the root also pain if it is bending if it is sitting it also mounts up and if someone is lifting something heavy and climbing a staircase upwards which is something heavy Probably in this moment of time, there is tremendous interdiscal pressure is there. The pressure effect is more, pain is more, more reflections in the distributions. So that is how it is correlated with the mechanical effect, with the mechanical interdiscal pressures and the reflections of this and the clinical findings down below in the distributions. So that is how these characteristics of pain is being seen in case of intervertebral disc prolapse and is also uh, that there is exertion so the exertion leads to a pain cough sneezing forward bending lifting something 
climbing that leads to your more interdiscal pressure, more interdiscal pressure, more pressure of the root, more pressure of the root, more reflex on the periphery. So that is how the things goes on, and this is how it is mechanically related with the, with the mechanically related to the reflections in the clinical fissures down below. So that is why this is the picture and characteristic of the pain in case of root pain, why it is seen as lifting position is less and why it is more interesting, forward bending, lifting something is more. It is all related to mechanical pressure of the root. Now, why we are talking about the clinical findings also? We always go for, go for your SLRT and also sensory and motor uh, examinations. In the clinical pictures, in the situations that the, as I said, the history is almost typical. Most of the time, lifting of something heavy, forward bending, or that leads to your sudden onset of pain in the back, which may be confining. Or if there is more the interdiscal pressure or more pressure over there, probably it goes for root pain and also sciatica and other things will be coming up. Sciatica and other things will be coming up. So that is uh, that is the consequence of the event that take place in the subsequent days. <coughs> now, now the patients usually give the history of sudden onset of pain, radiation of the pain. Calf and sneezing usually lead to more exacerbation of pain, but while he is sleeping and taking rest, there is reduction of the pain. That is a characteristic pain, calf, teasing, accelerate, rest, lying on the bed, it relieves his pain. That is a characteristic finding, particularly seen in the intervertebral disc prolapse. Now, while you are doing the clinical examination, paraspinal pressure effect is one of the things where you, if you give a pressure over there, a paraspinal region, that leads to your pressure effect on the root and also that may radiate to the pain there. That is one of the interesting clinical findings uh, related to intervertebral in this area. And significant clinical findings, we always go for your SLRT. Straight leg region test reason. But as I said, uh, as, as it is important to understand that why you are doing so, essentially one is doing movement of the hip and also SI joint. So in a situation like this where pain is originating from the hip or this SI joint also may have some pain. That is why we do reduce the down the below, when I lower down the angle, once there is pain subside, you do dorsiflexions or bowstring stress or vagar stress, whatever it might be. These tests are essentially important to understand the logic behind is that if you do so, they are loading down, you are making stable the joints, joints, the mechanical part of the joint anywhere. But while you are pulling the dorsiflexing or you are doing the bowstring, what you are doing? You are pulling the posterior structures of the hamstring along with the sighting nerve. So now only the soft tissue is seen. Now if there is a characteristic pin is exerting again because of the hamstring pull, I mean to say both strings and dorsiflexions, it indicates that this point is not originating from the hip or spine, I mean to say hip or the or the SI joint, but essentially is coming from the back and it is a repetition or he experiences the same pain. That is a very important thing to understand that where from the pain is coming. And also piriformis fossa syndrome will come across. So what is this? There are also similar things may happen. But in case of piriformis fossa syndrome, you will find the pain area is no correlation with the pain originated from the spine, but it is locating somewhere gluteal area and down below. That is an interesting way to exclude the PID pain from that of the piriformis fossa pain. And also the other pain with that of the other pain with that of the only PID pain by the clinical examination. Equally, once there is a pain while it is established, then we have to look for the segmental involvement of the sensory and motor. It's an important thing to understand that the sensory distributions from the uh, 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 sensory distributions for umbilical cystein and around the inguinal ligament is your L1 down uh, then and then down below L1, L2, L3, L4, medial side, dorsum of the these all things are important to evaluate the sensory involvement, pain, dust, pain, so all these things, so all the tracks should be examined and to see what is the deficiency of hardware. That is your, your sensory, 
and also to look for the motor power on the gradings, MRC gradings 0 point up to 5 to see the how the deficiency over there. Every nerve, every, every root should to be examined for a sense myotome and dermatome. Then come to the flexor that where is the deficit is, is it L4, it is L5. Then you have to correlate to these findings that with the pain exerting over there. And if it is breaching, etc., then you can come to a conclusion where the probable thing is happening. That is, is all correlation to the neurological finding with that of the history and the also your findings that need to be correlated. That is how the uh, your your clinical examination is important. It also look for the important important for the superficial and the deep reflexes and how is affected. How these knee jerk is uh, there, then also ankle jerk S1, L3 for the uh, L3, L4, 5 the knee jerk, all the sensory motor and reflexes, superficial and deep, also to be examined. That will give you clinical pictures of these patients and also localize a uh, movement of the root is evident out. Then, what is the investigative tool we are supposed to utilize? It is important to understand that it is never go for the MRI, jump MRI in a situation like this. Most of the patients which are coming in the day-to-day -day activity, day-to-day -day orthopedic practice should not go for the basic investigations. Probably most of the time, these patients which is coming for the first one or two attack, probably the rest, sometimes physiotherapy, sometimes your medications is used. But if it's coming again, or in a situation is true where there is massive neurological deficit is coming along with, or he is a Kodaikuna syndrome, yes, there is no point wasting, you have to go very quickly do the investigations and do the necessary things. That is one group, that is very common. Otherwise, in the PID is the commonest cause, lumbosacral sprain is the commonest cause of the decay. Next to that is the PID. So one person is experiencing knee headache and sneezing throughout the life at least once once in a once in his lifetime. So next to that is your backache. So headache and other things are experienced by the all the people of the world. And next to that is backache. So all the patients who is coming with the backache should not go for the all the investigation until unless this again clinical findings are are red flag. So as to go for the investigation, otherwise no initial period. And uh, usually, if you go need to go for the investigation, it's always logical to go for the plain X-ray. It is also important to exclude certain important points like your congenital deformities or the, any sort of deformities in the spine or any defect in the bony strength. That is a basic thing. And next, if it is necessary for MRI, MRI Sometimes even CT scan, send the contrast MRI, so and so, all the investigations may be necessary subsequently depending upon the need. But it's not necessary that everyone is supposed to go for the all thorough gadgets of your uh, battery of investigations. You see, injudicious, probably it is time um, 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 expensive also. But yes, it is also important, it is not that it is discouraged, but while there is importance, you need to go. But it is, as you know, the only cases are mostly coming with the backache, you do not have to undergo so massive investigation. Then after that, it is true that the only investigations, if the patients usually in backache or PID need to undergo a period of conservative treatment. That conservative treatment essentially rests, nowadays it is for a brief period of time, for less than one week time. And in this period of time, some physiotherapy may also never go for traction. That is a controversial thing which may do some damage also, but electrotherapy may sometimes do help. Then all analysis and other muscle relations, depending on the choice, they help you. Subsequently, if the patient is improving, go for physiotherapy and exercise that help him to regain back his original position. But, but, but it is true that somebody may not improve, somebody may deteriorate, that leads to your further investigation. Usually surgical intervention of this group commonly needs after 6 to 8 weeks then he is not recovering from this problem. In between certain groups of people who is recovering to some extent, but it is also not a case for your not fully recovering, but not at a case clinically go for the operative treatment, all well, this gray zones probably go for the other 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 model types of investigations which include epidural steroid, sometimes facetus injections and other things may be needed. 
but uh, only 4 to 5 percent, sometimes 5 percent cases actually need to go for the operative treatment. A basic operative treatment is basic principle is that that removal of the disc in the valve disc. Now, depending upon the approach, approach there are so many things are now evolving. Whether micro disectomy is important, so the people are doing for the other techniques for endoscopic surgeries also, or conventional operative treatment. So many things are now evolving. It is true, but basic principle all the operations is actually to remove the disc. Whether you can do it a minimal small operation, small minimal approach, it is just like something is there inside the art and you have to dig it down, dig it out. Whether you are making a big hole or whether a small hole you piecemeal you are removing, that is up to you. So it is a, that is but basically the principle is that you have to dig something out from this earth, down below. So that is the basic principle. The basic principle they often they wish to be out. Be the conventional operative treatment where morbidity is high, it is true the pain is more, muscle injury is more, prolonged rest is necessary, that is one, but it needs a very uh, meticulous and also chances of, chances of recurrence is very less. That can be again done with the minimal surgery or exposure fenestrations or even microsurgery or sometimes even other, other modules of treatments, but all the modules of treatment, whatever it might be, that these are all the approaches. How you approaching, whether a big approach or a small approach, it all the same. Or, or, or that is the difference. But basic principle is that you are removing the disc which is causing compressions over the root is the most important thing you have to do. That is by a conventional treatment or by other modulus treatments, it depends upon the surgeon's size and so acquaintances with the with the modern gadgets and also all the all the all the things how is it is a, a important learning curve one need to understand from some uh, how to approach from some later side from post process so many things but basic principle is that removal of the offending digs by a approach which is convenient convenient for the surgeon concern but you need to remove the digs which is a mechanical thing you need to decompress this part so the compression effect of the disc has been relieved be it a conventional surgery or be it a microscope surgery all are same principally same but the um, uh, chances of recurrence is more common with the newer techniques and uh, but the chances of conventional operations if it's done the chances of recurrence is very less one of the most important thing one need to understand that while doing the PID the wrong level surgery is the commonest common problem we encounter. That means if the disc was there L5-4, L4, L5, the operations may be done with L5, S1 sometime. A reverse thing may also happen. And sometime it is also understand, need to understand the same picture, the prolapse may take place in a different level also. Now which one is the uh, offending one, which one is not offending one, you need to clinically cut. So sometimes that is why other investigators do like discography and other things are also important to understand that which digs actually did calculate to cause the pain, whether the L, L3, L4, L4, L5, L5, S1. Because as I say, sometimes your body roots may be involved, clinical pictures may be also confusing and MRI may not give you a very good idea about which suit are supposed to remove. So that leads to your other investigative tool to make it sure the which dix is actually offending dix to find out. Otherwise, if you are removing a dix which is not actually causing any compressions may lead to your non-recovery of the patients and other reoperations re may be necessary. That is another thing, that is another zone where you need to understand, understand to need to go for further investigation and other things. And post body recovery, yes, depending upon the extensive the surgery one can go early if it is microscopic surgery mini hole but in conventional surgery yes it takes long time to recover it is true uh, from the morbidity but in the micro disectomy operations patients can come back to his normal position so normal recovery is quite fine so this is how it did collapse take place this is how we try to manage and do the investigation other things then if you do have any question, you can ask, you can discuss the matter anytime.